everybody, Piggy Me here. We're back with Doki Doki Literature Club, and um, we're just picking up where we left off, basically, in the game. We're going to write this poem and see what happens. I don't know. Alright, so we have to pick some uh, words. 20 words, I guess? Let's see. We're going to pick... Um, which way do I want to go with this? Do I want to be cutesy? Let's so, what it seems like, it seems like she's the cutesy one who tries to act tough and not show it. She's the one who's, like, all, like, shy and, like, timid and whatever. And then she's, like, the cute, like, kind of like the adorable one who's just kind of, like, whatever. Like, wow, I'm going to cry and kind of cool or whatever that they're close to. And I don't know their personalities. So, like, I mean, like, that's their personalities. And then, of course, we had Monica who was, like, super smart overachiever we're gonna be like the bummer no we're gonna be like a mixture let's go with lollipop oh oh okay so we, it changes each one or a uh, ocean sweet uncontrollable sing secretive i'm sorry are these are we writing a poem is this how we're writing a poem are these just random words to describe stuff passion fallible melody destiny lucky special kitty embrace anime raindrops oh i should have picked hawaii Death. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. Vibrant and twirl. Let's see what happens. Hi again, Tanya. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Haha. <laughs> nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Oh, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. <clears throat> Thanks for keeping your promise, Tanya. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a- Sorry, my voice is like a, a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it? Oh, come on. Like it deserves any slack. Siri told me you didn't even want to join any clubs this year. And last year, too. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Is she gonna kill me? She's gonna kill me. That's- Yep, confirmed. Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for someone who keeps her manga collection in the club room. <laughs> Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying manga and manga. Manga is literature! Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. Don't worry, guys. Tanya always gives, that, gives it his best, as long as he's having fun. He helps me with busy work without me even asking. Like cooking, cleaning my room. How dependable. Siri, that's because your room is so messy it's distracting. And you almost set your house on fire once. Is that so? <laughs> you two are really good friends, aren't you? I might be a little jealous. How come? You and Tanya can become good friends, too. Uh, um... Siri? Hmm? As usual, Siri seems oblivious, oblivious to the weird situation she's just put me into. Oh, oh, Yuri even brought you something today. You know? What? Wait, Siri. Eh, me? Um, not really. Don't be shy. It's really nothing. What is it? <sighs> Never mind. Siri made it sound like a big deal when it's really not. Uh, what do I do? Eh, I'm sorry, Yuri, I wasn't thinking. I guess that means it's up to me to rescue the situation. Hey, don't worry about it. First of all, I wasn't expecting anything in the first place. So, any nice gesture from you is a pleasant surprise. It'll make me happy no matter what. Uh, is that so? Yeah, I won't make it a big deal if you don't want it to be. Alright, well, here. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. We could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This, this is... Alice is girl accidentally being so cute. She can pick out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. 
Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expected Monica to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. See, Yuri and Monica are having a cheery conversation in the corner. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. You can't help but notice her intense expression, like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Man, looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slumped down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something literature related by myself like this? I guess I always read some of the book Yuri gave me, but I'm not really feeling, I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I closed my eyes and ended up listening in on Sayuri's conversation with Monica. I'm probably going to seem really name, lame compared to all the other clubs, though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festivals are a chance to show everyone li what literature is all about. The problem is that the idea of a literature club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their creative minds. Hmm. That doesn't solve the problem, though. Eh, what do you mean? Even if we come up with the most fun thing ever, nobody will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know? And after they come, we can do the thing to speak their creative minds. What's this? Siori is taking this really seriously? It's rare to hear her deliberating like this. Huh, that's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? What, what kind? Uh, well, I guess we got cupcakes. Ah, uh, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. That isn't why you suggested it. Wait, that isn't why you suggested it? Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sierra is still her usual self. But therein lies the unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation at all. Sayuri can put her mind in things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Ah! I open my eyes to find Sayuri's face filling my vision. Well, I mean, you may not see it through her eyes, but you can, you can definitely see her eyes looking at you. I nearly fall out of my chair. <laughs> Sorry. Wait. Actually, I'm not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> That's what I do best. That's the problem. What about you? You look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Huh? N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the doubt. I can't even do that. Look, Sari, it's written all over you. Eh? Sari glances around at herself. Freaking it over, like, <laughs> like she's like she's literally looking for the words written on her. Like, that's super cute. I love it. How's it written all over me? You were clearly in a rush this morning. Look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah. I run my fingertips on the side of Sierra's hair, trying to straighten it out. Man, you really need a brush for this. My hair is just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. It's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain on your collar right here. I try to wipe off the stain with my fingers. But, but, but nobody would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. <laughs> hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh? That's super mean. Like, honestly, man, you can't just be like, why do you think you don't have a boyfriend? Like, first of all, <laughs> sir? What? I mean, it's close me. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button her blazer from the bottom. Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind.
And then it, like, it changes perspectives. She's over here blushing and stuff. Clearly she likes it. Like, look at her little blush. She's so adorable. I wish I could draw like this. I used to want to draw, like, manga arts out. I, I suck, but it's okay. Look at her blushing and stuff. Ooh, touching her chest. Like, what are you doing, sir? Their shoes. I, I wish their shoes were red to match, like, the bow here and her bow on her head. But whatever. Uh -huh. This is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Eh? D don't say that. You'll make me feel weird about it, stupid. It's okay, though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button might come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. Well, that probably explains it because, well, boobs, pull out your shirt. And uh, when you try to button a shirt that may be too small in the chest area, sometimes the buttons pull and it might be hard to close that shirt. And, uh, yeah, that's why. <laughs> Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boots got bigger again. D don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, you look much better now, so, uh, why does it feel strange to see Sierra's blazer button up like that? But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. So Yuri hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Hmm. Chew. That's so much better. So Yuri puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, then I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying it like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you'd take care of me better than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. Stop saying all these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well, anyway, just focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. Only if you focus on going to bed earlier. Fine, fine. It's a deal. Eh? Hey, I guess we really are better at taking care of each other than we are at taking care of ourselves. Yeah, I guess so, huh? So, maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Aw, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share the poems we wrote now? Yay! Tanya, I can't wait to read yours. Yeah, same. I found it, failed to sound enthusiastic, but Sayori still trots away to retrieve her poem. By the way, did you remember to write a poem last night? Yeah. My relaxation ends. I can't believe I agreed to do something so embarrassing. I couldn't really find much inspiration since I've never really done this before. Well, now that everyone's ready, why don't you find someone to share with? I can't wait. Siri and Monica enthusiastically pull out their poems. Siri's is on a wrinkled sheet of loose leaf torn from a spiral notebook. On the other hand, Monica wrote hers in a composition notebook. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, I can already see Monica's pristine handwriting from where I sit. Natsuki and Yuri reluctantly comply as well, reaching into their bags. I do the same myself. <coughs> I'm gonna go, let's see, I'm gonna go to Natsuki because she already like brought up having a poem, blah blah blah, I didn't want to share it because she was too shy, so. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poem yesterday. Probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. <clears throat> well, that's about what I expected from someone like you. That's a little blunt. Well, excuse me, it's not like I said it was bad. Just didn't evoke any emotions. So basically it's not cute enough for your taste? Do you want to get smacked? I'll pass. <sighs> well, anyway, I guess I need to show you mine. Not that you'll like it. Eagles can fly. Monkeys can jump. Crickets can leap. Horses can race. Owls can seek. Cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly. People can try. But that's about it. And, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I told you you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced I wouldn't like it? Well, because everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even take my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem. Seeing everyone around you do great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. 
But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like, if I set up for a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose, it helps bring out the feeling in that last line. So, you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what it means to be a pro. I'm glad you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? So, okay, so yeah, so she's in the first year. We're in the second year if she's younger than us, yeah. Yeah, I guess not. Mm. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but if Natsuki is really proud, then I won't take that away from her. Good kid. Don't do that. Who should I sell my poem to next? We're gonna go with... Mmm... Yuri. Alright. Mmm... Yuri stares at the poem. A minute passes. More than enough time for her to finish reading. Um... Oh! Sorry! I forgot to start speaking. Um... It's fine. Don't force yourself. I'm not... Uh, I just need to put my thoughts into words. Hold on. Okay. This is your first time writing a poem, right? Uh, yeah? Why do you ask? I'm just making sure. I guess they might be after reading through it. Ah, uh, so it's that bad. No! Did I just raise my voice? Ah, uh, I'm so sorry. Yuri buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice it's been several minutes and we haven't really gotten anywhere. It might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine, I didn't really notice. What were you saying? Right, um... It's just that there were some specific writing habits that are usually typical of new writers. And having been through that myself, I kind of learned to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they form fit the two together. The end result is that both the style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's not something you can be blamed for. There's so many different stats, skills, and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice, and learning by example, and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in this club gives you valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little bit biased, though. Biased? How? Uh, um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to herself or to me or not to you. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. Yuri smiles dream dreamily as if that's a rare opportunity for her, which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature blog? Ghosts under the light. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow, bathing. It must be this one. The last remaining street lights I have withstood the test of time. The last yet to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm. Breathing air of the present but living in the past. The light flickers. I flicker back. I'm not good at interpreting poetry anymore, guys. I took, I don't know, I had English in school, but I like poetry. I don't understand this one. I don't. I don't get it. So I know it's, it's, it seems very metaphorical. I don't think it's actually about an actual ghost, really. I'm not sure, though. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? wasn't thinking that at all. But it took you a long time to read. Ah, well, I just don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is pretty. Eh? That's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you like it. I'll be honest. Since it's our first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghost hearing? Huh? Actually, the story isn't about a ghost at all, Tanya. <laughs> really? I must have totally missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance at it over it after all. But remember that poets often express their own thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is only being symbol symbolically compared to a ghost, lingering in her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. 
That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I hadn't even thought of that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. <laughs> yeah, maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. <clears throat> Alright, let's go to Monica. Hi, Tanya. Having a good time so far? Uh, yeah. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since you're new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or things we can do better, I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, keep that in mind. First, I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. <laughs> Don't worry, Tanya. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? But it's that sort of barrier that we'll all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. And Monica, my poem. Mm hmm. I like this one. It makes me think of something Sierra you would like. Is that so? You and Sierra are really good friends, right? Wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if you had those sorts of things in common. Uh, well, you may be good friends, but Sierra and I are actually really different. Hmm. Well, that may be the case. But maybe there are also some similarities that you wouldn't expect. The way she talks about you. It sounds like the two of you really care about each other's well-being. Even if you show it in different ways, it ends up being more similar than you'd think. So I think that's the kind of vibe I get when reading your poem. Hmm. You're not, you're not reading into it too much? <laughs> I could be. Oh gosh, I sound like Yuri. But in any case, Yuri's writing has kind of a gentle feel to it. I can tell that she likes exploring with emotions, likes happiness and sadness. Who knew that someone so happy would enjoy sad things, too? Yeah, that's totally unexpected. Well, teach their own. And you shouldn't be afraid to experiment a little bit, either. I'm sure I'll end up trying different things a lot. It could take a while to feel a while before I feel comfortable doing this. That's okay. I'd love to see you try new things. That's the best way to find the kind of style that suits you. Everyone else might be a little bit biased with their own kinds of styles, but I'll always help you find what suits you the most. So don't force yourself to write the way everyone wants you to write. It's not like you have to worry about impressing them or anything. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Anyway, do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims not to be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. It doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Hole and wall. It couldn't have been me. See the direction the spackle protrudes? A noisy neighbor? An angry boyfriend? I'll never know. I wasn't home. I peer inside for a clue. No, I can't see. I reel, blind like a film left out in the sun. But it's too late. My retinas already scorched with a permanent copy of the mean meaningless image. It's just a little hole. It wasn't too bright. It was too deep. Stretching forever into everything. A hole of infinite choices. I realize now that I wasn't looking in. I was looking out. And he, on the other side, was looking in. First of all, this poem was the longest one. I did not expect the ending. He, on the other side, was looking in. Who was looking in where? What is going on? I do not know. I thought it was going to be... I, someone broke something in a hole in the wall, maybe in a house. But now I'm, I think it's metaphorical, too. I don't know about, like, looking within yourself. I don't know. Maybe someone broke down the, the walls of their mind, their, their emotions or something, broke down that barrier. Uh, maybe. You know what? Whoa. That actually makes sense. Hold on. Hey, look at me. Hey. <laughs> Over here interpreting it. Wow. Okay. I'm going to stop talking. Interpreting. That's what I said. I said interpreting. That's... Anyway, <laughs> so what do you think? Hmm, it's very free form, if that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really the right person to ask for feedback. Uh, it's okay, yeah. That kind of style has gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the time between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Uh, well, I'm not sure if I know how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that, but it's kind of coming on strongly. 
Maybe after everyone is better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets too fixated on a specific point. If you try so hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on the paper and tidy it up later. Another way to think about this is another way to think about it is this. If you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll just get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. And that's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Cool. Like I wonder if we're gonna get one of those every day. A little writing tip. That's kinda cool for people who wanna be writers. And let's go to Sarah. Who should we go to next? I mean there's only one person left. I don't know. Who should we go to? Oh my goodness, this is so good, Tanya. Yeah? I love it. I had no idea you were such a good writer. Siri, you must be seriously overacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Haha. <laughs> Jeez. Your opinion was way more constructive than this. Are you sure you don't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know? So, when I read your poem, it's not just a poem, it's a Tanya poem. And that makes it feel extra special. Like, I can feel your feelings in it. Siori hugs the sheet against her chest. You're so weird, Siori. Ah, uh, I'm really happy just that you wrote one. It just reminds me of how you're really part of the club now. Not to mention the fact that I'm standing in front of you in a club room. Hmm, okay. Uh, well, of course. Not really into it yet, but that doesn't mean I'll break my promise. See, it's like I said before, Tanya. Deep down, you're not selfish at all, you know? Trying new things like this for other people, that's something that only really good people do. Thanks, Siri. I'm not sure if Siri sees the full picture of my motive here. Then again, I can't deny that she's part of the reason I joined. Knowing how much this means to her and all. Yeah, and I'm going to make sure you have lots of fun here, okay? That will be my way of thanking you. All right, I'm gonna hold you to that then. Yay! Now you'll read my poem too, right? Don't worry, I'm really bad at this. <laughs> we'll see about that. Dear Sunshine, the way you glow through the blinds in the morning, through my blinds in the morning, it makes me feel like you missed me, kissing my forehead to help me out of bed, making me rub the sleepy from my eyes. Are you asking me to come out and play? Are you trusting me to wish away a rainy day? I look above, the sky is blue. It's a secret, but I trust you too. If it wasn't for you, I could sleep forever. But I'm not mad. I want breakfast. That is me. I'm hungry. <laughs> and I am hungry right now. Yeah, I want breakfast too. <clears throat> Sayori. This is just a guess, but did you wait until this morning to write this? No. Just, just a little bit. You can't answer just a little bit to a yes or no question. I forgot to do it last night. Well, at least that makes me feel a little bit better about myself. Don't be mean. I still tried my best. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to say that it was a bad poem. It came out nice. Or how should I put it? It sounds just like you. Really? Yeah. Especially that last line. I made eggs and toast. Even though you were late to school? It's bad to skip breakfast. I get all cranky. Well, I guess there's no point in arguing. Anyway, thanks for showing me. <laughs> this was so much fun. Monica is the best. Uh, yeah. But next time, I won't forget. And I'm gonna write the best poem ever. Well, I guess I look forward to it. Phew. I guess that's everyone. I glance around the room. That was a little more stressful than I anticipated. It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club, after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I end up getting myself into. Cross room, Siri and Monica are happily chatting. My, land, my eyes land on Yuri Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper, sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Um, did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. Natsuki dismissively returns the poem to the desk with one hand. I guess you could say it's fancy. Uh, thanks. Here is his cute... Cute? Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can that be cute? I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? 
You may need to try that hard to come up with something nice to say. Thanks. But it didn't really come out nice at all. Um, well, I do have a couple of suggestions. <laughs> if I was looking for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. See, you already liked it. And Tanya did too. Hey, don't bring my- Hey, don't bring my- don't, hey, hey, don't you bring me into this. Hey, don't you- Don't you bring me into this at all. So based on that, I gladly give you- Oh. <laughs> so based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. First of all, excuse me, I appreciate that offer, but I spent a lot of time establishing my writing skill. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless of course I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. Uh, and Tanya liked my poem too, you know, guys, wait a minute. Look, I'm new here. Do not bring my name up in your arguments, please, please do not do that, please. <laughs> I don't want them fighting and then like, uh, look, I'm not the true sides, aren't I? He even told me he was impressed by it. That's case suddenly stands up. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh. I didn't realize you were so invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Eh, that's not what I... Uh, you're, you're just... Yuri stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Tanya appreciates my advice more than he appreciated yours. Ha! Huh. And how do you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... Oh, I was full of myself. I would deliberately go out of my way to make everything I do overly cutesy. Uh, uh um... Is everyone okay? Well, you know what? I was the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Tanya started showing up. Natsuki! Um, Natsuki, that's a little... This doesn't involve you. I, I don't like fighting, guys. Suddenly, both girls turned towards me as if they just noticed I was standing there. Ex See, look, and now... <laughs> yeah, drew me into this. She'd stuff in her bra. People over here just writing cutesy poems on purpose. Like, what? Tanya... She, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. <laughs> Children. She could get over herself and learn to appreciate that simple writing is more effective. Then this wouldn't have happened in the first place. What's the point of making your poems all convoluted for no reason? The meaning should jump out at the reader, not force them to have to figure it out. Help me explain this to her, Tanya. Nope, I'm not doing that. Wait. There's a reason we have so many deep and expressive words in our language. It's the only way to convey complex feelings and, the, and meaning the most effectively. Avoiding them is not only necessarily limiting yourself, it's also a waste. You understand that, right, Tanya? Y'all, nah, I'm not, mm, um, well, uh, how did I get dragged into this in the first place? It's not like I know anything about writing, but whoever I agree with, they'll probably think more highly of me. So, of course, that's gonna be... And we are ending this right here, guys. Cliffhanger. We are going to end this. I'm gonna put up a poll on Twitter with these suggestions in this picture. And I want you guys to comment down below, if you don't follow me on Twitter, saying, what choice should I pick? Should I say Natsuki, Yuri, or put, help me, Sayori? So, you guys let me know. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a blessed morning or night, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!